Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Aliens and UFOs video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's start the whole new series here. This one yet again based on some of your newer suggestions. Please go ahead and keep them coming. I'm going to be doing this series for at least the next couple of weeks. So anything that I see late in the game, I'll still consider. And then as always, I'll look at some of the past suggestions too to see if there's any really important, really fascinating ones that I might have missed. So thank you so much again for your continued patience on this. It's been almost a year when it comes to my go around here. This one is a fascinating entry instead of let's say talking about a specific abduction or a specific experience that happened to someone in this case it's going to be talking about an actual extraterrestrial creature more as a topic rather than let's say a specific occurrence and you'll know what I mean this about this here in a minute but yes when I was looking at all this info I had no idea that this type of species existed within the aliens and UFOs world that's why I love doing these videos because not only do I get to learn all this stuff but also so many of you out there get to hear this stuff for the first time too and it has to do with this let's talk about it now they go by various names but it seems like the most famous colloquium or the most famous term associated with them are the mantis aliens so let's go ahead and let's talk about all that fascinating info associated with them here so who are these mantis aliens well they're a set of species again that are uh, existing within the alien and UFO world. They go by various other names too. Another one is the praying mantis aliens and then even in some folklore or some mythologies associated with certain tribes they also go by specific names there too. But for lack of a better term they're known as the mantis aliens and then they exist actually within the same aliens and UFOs world especially when it comes to the information associated with the greys. So you and I know about the greys. Those are the most common 100% well-known type of aliens that are out there. Those are those tinier aliens, the ones that have the big round head, usually with the big oval eyes, maybe even a very tiny mouth, even a tiny, tiny a slit for a nose, if even that, and then overall just a smaller experience um, in terms of an alien. Here though, the mantis alien is a much larger version associated with their, their species and get this they seem to be more than the lines of the quote-unquote overseers of the greys that's what I found so fascinating the idea that there's this hierarchy associated within that type of world who knew that when it comes to that thing uh, that type of universe how ours almost coexist with theirs when it comes to having hierarchies but first let's talk about the physical characteristics tied to them so yes I was mentioning earlier they're much much taller in fact they're reported to be about about six to seven feet tall and as far as their physical characteristics imagine a real life praying mantis but larger and almost six to seven feet tall that's essentially what you're looking at here they're bipedal they're also considered carnivorous they also have these long thin torsos these long joints as well that go uh, throughout the various parts of their bodies their heads are very large too they have a long thin association with them, almost sometimes triangular as well. And then of course the eyes also very much stand out, in some cases being large slanted eyes, and in other cases being more reminiscent of the grays. And then as far as their coloration, they have a deeper brown or a black color to them as opposed to the grayish colors associated with, well, you know, the grays. That's why they're called the grays. But as far as these mantis aliens too, one of the most fascinating things about them is that they have almost like a ranking of sorts when it comes to their clothing. When you think of the average gray, you think of something that has very uh, tight fit forming clothing, sometimes even shiny type clothing. Here though, these mantis aliens have these robes and these robes have various colors and they're all supposed to signify different ranks. So if you ever happen to see one, if you happen to be in the unfortunate circumstance of seeing one and you happen to look at their various colors, different, uh, different Different mantis aliens will have different colors that'll discern their type of rank. Others, though, seem to be also completely unclothed. I guess it just seems to be on which specific encounter you have. And those that you see unclothed also have this almost like oily substance that seems to cover 
their entire uh, body. So that's other another type of differentiation. And then as far as their physical characteristics on making vocal sounds, apparently it's this. When you think of the grays, you think of the classic telepathic messaging, the type of stuff where it's silent and it's happening between either the grays themselves or in some cases the grays and the humans. Here though, the mantis aliens seem to have that, but they also have an auditory language, something where it's more vocalized and they'll be able to communicate with each other by making these unique clicking sounds. Go imagine that if you know you're in the presence of a mantis aliens, it's because all of a sudden you start hearing these unique clicking sounds that are happening in the nearby area. And that's essentially how they communicate with each other. Plus, they apparently do that as well with the greys too. And going back again too, as far as the hierarchy, that essentially what seems to be the scenario. So whenever you have your classic gray abduction, sometimes if you're lucky or unlucky enough, then you'll see these mantis aliens there and they seem to be ordering the greys around. They'll seem to be telling them exactly where to go, who to pick up, what to do afterward. That's essentially the uh, the type of scenario that most people seem to have. In fact, a mantis is known to be accompanied by several of these gray aliens, and then these gray aliens just do everything almost like a hive mind. It was fascinating to read this info because to me, I kept thinking to myself, wow, this is like straight out of a sci-fi movie. Like when it comes to the movie Aliens, you had, of course, the gigantic queen who reigned above them all, and then you had the drone aliens that were there ready to serve her, ready to take commands. And then they all operated on a uh, collective mind as opposed to individual mind, such is the case here. And then as far as anything else, as their origins, they go back apparently to a lot of Native American and African American mythology. I was mentioning earlier how they have various names associated with them too. Well, apparently there's this idea that so many other people are a long, long time ago during that time period, I'm uh, sorry, during their interactions with these mantis aliens, they associated them with granting life on earth, almost like granting language, granting fire. They're the ones that brought about the ability to almost communicate. In fact, they almost directed some of the earliest civilizations here when it comes to hunters, pointing them towards the moon, using that as a way to encourage them to throw things. And then that way they'll be able to to, uh, to, to, to advance as a civilization. And that leads to another thing as far as their actual intents here. You have, of course, the classic abductions, which are terrifying to anyone that happens to encounter them. But it seems like sometimes these abductions are done as a more beneficial matter, if that makes sense. It's more of getting these people on board and then teaching them exactly what's going to happen if people do not take care of Earth. So they'll show holographic images of the Earth being destroyed, letting them know, letting whoever's abducted, that they, in turn, have to share this news to everyone about this impending doom. And then that way, this uh, mantis alien is trying to make sure that that stops from happening. So I have heard about that. I'm thinking some of you might have read about that info, too, how some of these abductees almost experience these messiah-like messages telling them, warning them about what will happen afterward with human civilization if things don't take turned around. And so that's where they're more of a benefactor. And then, of course, there's the other side, the more darker negative side when it comes to the abductions, where people have stated that the mantis aliens are there to oversee um, as far as either human harvesting, maybe taking some kind of parts of human bodies, mixing them with others as well, creating like a bi- I don't know if you call it like an insect-like by combination of, of, of beings between humans and these greys, or even in this case, the mantis aliens. Who knows, but that seems to be more along the lines of the more darker side associated with this. In fact, if you have uh, the unfortunate circumstance of getting a mantis aliens who are known as get this, the tall blacks, like they have a very dark skin, very almost blackish skin. Those are the ones that seem to be the, the ones in the, uh, doing this DNA harvesting, this almost like uh, abduction of people just to have medical experience done on them. So very, very bad set of circumstances if that occurs there. But that's pretty much it as far as the info tied to these mantis aliens. They're seen very rarely, no doubt because of their hierarchy, because of their rankings, they would allow more of the gray to do a lot of the grunt work 
so to speak, when it comes to these abductions and then visiting certain places here on Earth. And then it's every now and then they'll just make their presence known. And then that way they'll be able to either share their more beneficial information with humankind or conversely do some very, very bad things to the humans too. But if anyone has any more info, anything else I might have missed, please post those comments below. You know how much I love to hear anything else that we can share to the YouTube audience. If there's anyone that has any specific encounters that they know of not necessarily hopefully with themselves but with others to see if there's one that stands out please post them in the comments who knows maybe i might share it within an upcoming video too as far as an actual uh, listing for an encounter uh, because in this case like i mentioned earlier this one is more on the lines of more of talking about the species of these mantis aliens as opposed to an actual encounter but all right everyone thank you so much as always and please continue with those suggestions and i'll be doing some more of those going forward all right everyone thanks and as always take care